Welcome back to another episode of When It Rays It Pours. Uh, we got video again, John. Uh, here in the high res. We're doing the high res episode. Uh, My name's not John. Oh, I'm sorry. Anybody, ever, anyway, welcome back to another episode of When It Rays It Pours, everybody. I'm Keith Ray, my co-host. I'm Muhammad. Karzai? No, I'm the Muhammad. Like, just Muhammad, like... My pronouns are Allah. Oh. God damn, bro. <laughs> uh, and I'm fully vaccinated. I'm telling all of our Muslim listeners... Every day you don't get vaccinated, I'm taking away some virgins. <laughs> there you go. You heard it straight from the uh, prophet shot. himself. Uh, is the prophet okay? Can I call you the prophet? Just call me Mo for short. Mo? <laughs> okay. So, Mo. I don't know if you're familiar with. Uh, Every day you don't get that shot, another virgin you will have not. <laughs> oh, my. I don't think that the Quran reads like a Dr. Seuss book. No, it well, reads like, uh, I think it reads like, the, what's that, pimp book by the guy from Oakland or whatever. Uh, Smooth, slim. Ice is cold as, I, yeah, uh, ice, what's uh, his name? Ice is cold as stone or something, uh, stone cold. What was that dude's name? I know who you're talking about, Iceberg Slim. Iceberg is the, Slim, Is the pimp yes. you're talking about in the so the, the book. Um, How embarrassing for the all-knowing to <laughs> not know the name of one of the most famous pimps of all time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was uh, definitely a well-respected author uh, towards the end of his days. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember Funny what the name thing of that book is, is but The most okay. used words in that book are you, no, what? I'm saying <laughs> that for it, in that order, those words in order were used 3,000 times in that book. Is that true? Yeah. No, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do know what you're saying. You're saying he said, you know what I'm saying? 3,000 times in one book. Yeah. Is, is that true? That's a heck of an accomplishment. That's, that's better than uh, the most amount of having said fuck. No, in I'm a just movie, biting off of old your mom's house bit. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I was like, they had a you know what I'm saying chant for oh. a while on their shows, just videos of people saying you know what I'm saying over and over again. Well, that was they like had a guy that said, you know what I'm saying, in a three minute video, he said you know what I'm saying seventy times. You know what I'm saying? God. It's fucking terrible. That's what he, he wasn't one of my flock. <laughs> wasn't one of your flock because <laughs> you are the uh, the prophet Muhammad uh, Mo for short. Uh, but uh, Big Bro, I also noticed that you were also on television this week again. I mean, we started this podcast to try and salvage my career. In entertainment, yeah, and since then you, you've been on the you news been trying to be an entertainer. <laughs> oh. I've been on uh, network television twice in less than a year. Yeah, and you, how many times? Yeah, never, never, never. That's a that's a solid zero. Uh, <laughs> no, you, maybe, maybe in nine years you'll catch up. So we could talk a little bit about how uh, they had you back on TV. Uh, <laughs> For the second time since we started this podcast. Oh, it was a different network. Yeah. yeah, I know. They're spreading you around. It's like first Leno, then Letterman. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Well, I I get it from 15 years ago. But because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when, when it was Leno or Letterman, then it was like something to strive for because those are like two brilliant, accomplished comedians. And now that it's monkey boy and uh the fake republican from back in the day it's like i don't know how how much i'm dying to get on there to do five minutes uh <laughs> but anyway john uh mo you got back on uh i didn't mean to it's tough when people change who they are uh 
with the way of the wind <laughs> to keep up with it. So I misspoke there, but uh, no, you no can sure. dead name me. I'll, yeah, I'll go back I? to John. Uh, <laughs> I really just changed uh, my identity to Muhammad just so I could force all our Muslim listeners to get vaccinated. Okay. I understand where you're coming from there. Is there, is, has there been a lot of pushback from the Muslim community about, about the vaccine? Because I thought that was just stupid rednecks that weren't getting vaccinated. I don't know. It's more than just stupid rednecks that aren't getting vaccinated. Well, I did hear that at one point in time so, they dude, were telling people in India to like liberal, rub poop on themselves. Even so. some of those liberals in California that are like super pro-vax aren't getting vaxxed because they're the same ones that used to be the anti-vaxxers because they said their kids got <laughs> autism from it, which is a total piece of BS. Yeah. Your kids have autism because they have autism. Autism is a part of the natural yeah, evolution your of kids human, have autism humanity. Because guess what? Just because you're rich and live in California and you're on TV doesn't mean you're going to have perfect children every time. <laughs> and I'm That's not true. saying they're fucking their cousins or nothing, but, you know, sometimes it just happens. I but, think I gave myself autism. So what? I mean, yeah. It if, uh, if people missed last week's episode, John explained that uh, he thinks through a series of kind of narrowing his avenues of comfort, he's given himself some compulsions in various avenues of his life. I think I said that um, pretty well. I'll bless it. Uh, we'll do it. But uh, Muslims don't do the cross, so I don't know how to bless you on that. But. Yeah, I don't know, cause like if I was, if you were like trying to bless me and I was Jewish, you could just like do the Star of David. Yeah, just do the baby. But I don't like a baby bow, like a little, like a little, not the full blown, you know, roller coaster ride bow that they do when well, they got pray. Any small ass rugs, so we're out of luck on that part. Can you use like a bath rug to pray on if you don't have like say you're as long as you're you face broke. the right direction I think you're cool. Okay, okay, that's what's up because I think of, I've seen some decorative bath rubs rugs that I I wouldn't mind praying on if that was my custom. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, let's talk a little bit about you being on the news, man, because that was really fucking funny. I mean. I'm going to put a link to it in the uh, show notes from this week. So everybody check out the links going to be in the description. Uh, but you were, they had you on to talk about the restaurant and to serve them some good old fashioned Indiana barbecue. Uh, tell me just a little bit, like when you were showing up to the uh, news station to be on the statewide news, uh, you know, what is Fox, the Fox affiliate, local Fox affiliate. When you're showing up to that building, what what's that like? What's the building look like? What what were your interactions with people getting into the building? That kind of thing, John. It's this office building. Uh, what part of town? Just, Downtown? Uh, no, uh, West Side, Northwest Side. Okay. Because was there security? Did you have to talk to like a guy? Uh. I mean, it's just like going into any office building, but uh, when you go to the front, there there's a security guard at the front desk, and they gotta buzz you in. Okay. But it's not like just some lady. Just some lady. It wasn't like some like if somebody was trying to it storm the, into this. It was the room. lady from Pineapple Express. <laughs> the, Jane Lynch. The no, the uh, school security guard. Oh, okay. Well, so you get past uh, old campus security cop uh, there, and they have you in. You set up your kind of uh, buffet of well, the no, foods that you brought in. Well, no, it's crazy, though, because it's Fox, you know? Yeah. So you're like, you know, I know I'm not going in and seeing Tucker Carlson or somebody, but it's weird because they did make you wear a mask until you got on the set. Really? Right on. So like they're they're <coughs> trying. Even though to, I'm fully vaccinated, yeah. they they uh, were having you wear a mask. Even though it was Fox, that's crazy. That's totally against their platform of uh, my mouth uh, mm. loud and spraying vitriol as well as germ. Uh, <laughs> you know that's kind of their yeah. thing. Well, I think uh, 
don't know. It's different. Our local mm-hmm. affiliates, I don't think, necessarily swing the same as uh, the national news organizations, you know? Yeah. Fox 59, they're based in Indianapolis, which is the most liberal part of Indiana. So, they, you know, they do whatever the place they're in does. They mostly hawk uh, feel-good stories and people getting shot. Uh, that's a lot. Fox, Fox 59, News at 10. Who got shot? Again. You know, this guy's been shot five times. We've done a story every time. Uh, uh, but also, they, don't put a link to any of that on this. Oh, you don't want the link? You don't want people to see you? Because you were hilarious. No, I don't think Ryan wants our listeners the to restaurant to be in. Uh, Fair enough. Uh, affiliated, That's why we always refer to it with this show. <laughs> That's why we always refer to it as the restaurant. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. So, uh, but okay, fair enough. I guess that would kind of spoil that whole anonymity thing. There. I think if anybody watches this, they can find it in another way. Yeah. I just I lo- I absolutely loved the way you were on the show. But did they put you in makeup. Do they? They have the lit girl no. come around and dap you or anything? Nothing like that. Hell no. No, okay. So they didn't have no, you go that to shit goes so quick. Man, you know. How long were you there total? Would you say? Because it was about a five well, minute no, segment. Like it was. It's an hour show. Okay. But I was fucking totally lucky because I was a fucking first segment. Oh, okay. So you'd have to stay and so watch the I, whole show. I got there. Uh, probably forty-five minutes before the show started. Okay. And then I was gone five minutes after the show started. So, I mean, I was there for about an hour, probably. Oh, okay. Okay. A little time to set up beforehand. They showed you where you were. Yeah, little, they took Where the they were going to shoot your scene. and uh, took, took me back, told me where I was going to set up and all that. And then, like, right before the show even started, and then we moved the couches around and move the table into place and because okay. all their stuff is on a small set so they just have a bunch of different furniture groups that for each segment you know what yeah I mean? so they can shuffle around to the different places they they like to do the big pan back out shot they get up now we're going over to this set that we have i mean you probably know a few set designers and uh prop masters and stuff like that a couple la couple people and it's all quick but i tell you what the fucking stage hands and shit or whatever you call them they were fucking happy for those leftovers dude that's what that's what our baby bro was asking he was like man i hope they, did, they didn't waste that food letting it sit there while they film the rest hell of the no. show i was like hell no all those people that are working on that show went over and ate that fucking food yeah and that's a morning show so they don't even get to you know Oh, yeah. They don't get lunch and food and shit that often. Like, the afternoon shows and shit, they probably get food all the time. But that morning show... You no, know. you got them hooked up. You had it looking good. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk <laughs> about the, the, the segment so we can talk about it. already had a plate before I left, and he's like, come back again soon, man. I was like, <laughs> whatever. Tell him to call me. Man, I, and like, that's that's not even a job where you know that those cats are making good money. They got money to eat plenty and stuff decent, but still like decent money and they th- fucking go to work in the fucking cargo shorts and a t-shirt every day don't yeah beards and whatever but all but also I like there's something of, about that food like seems oh, like it would be a cool job i want to eat some more of that delicious food man bring it back we'll have you back on the show man but you know i don't think they probably make that great of money no probably decent but like you mean the behind the scenes people? Yeah, I think they're making pretty good money. Probably decent, but I mean, not like great. No, I, I, well, I'm not saying. I that mean, none of them are living like, in campers, but. Yeah, I mean, everybody's clearly doing better than me. But I'm talking. I mean, <laughs> uh, it, which by we'll get into that in a minute. Just how I'm doing, <laughs> which I cracked up a little bit this week. But John, I want to stay on your uh, appearance on TV. Uh, with like, dude, you come out swinging, like right off the bat, they go, Hey everybody here from the best local barbecue joint around, uh, John Ray, 
and they walk over to you and they're like, what do you got for us? And you're like, well, since it's National Pulled Pork Month, I figured I'd pull us a butt. <laughs> and like, well, we had just talked about like how it was all these different national months, national mm. awareness month. Uh, was, Is it pulled, really national? It pulled Pork Day and it's Pork Month. <coughs> Is it really pork month? Yeah, the day I was there was pulled pork day. That's why we did what we did. The camera. God damn it. We'll be right back. After you guys are done, I need to mop the stuff over here, okay? Okay. Because that gets real sticky. Just, just remind me. Don't let me forget. Right. Yeah. Hi. How are you doing? Sorry. What do you mean? I thought it was, it had turned off, but it's still going. So, it's like, what the hell? And then I accidentally hit his thing. Sorry about that, John. Is it all right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I go, hey, let me go check this. I turn around and somehow I knock the. We try and set them off the table so they don't hit the table. Me neither. That's my whole point. Is I think I just whapped it off the thing. Couldn't tell you, bud. So, uh, and we're back. Uh, so what we, I was saying was, uh, you, they introduce you and you're like, Hey, it's national pulled pork day. Uh, so let me pull this butt for you. And they just burst into laughter off of pulling this butt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. well so i was just like you uh, threw them, you you were walking them through how you tear a pork shoulder apart. well i knew they're kind of like a goofy is their kind of their thing they're, like they're oh they try and be a funny morning show yeah okay like they try to have a wacky spin high energy and you know not like corny yeah but you know they're gonna they're not like laced up either you okay. know what i'm saying but you know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> no, so, but one of the things we wanted 
because they sent a form that you had to fill out. One of the things that we said we wanted to talk about was where it, uh, the cut comes from. Oh, okay. And it's the cut we use is a Boston butt. So that's why I said, you know, pull a butt. But it's weird because it really comes from the shoulder. Yeah, it's actually a pork shoulder, but you yeah. call it pork butt. Boston butt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's That's the good cut for pulled pork sandwiches. I mean, it's the jam. But that's what I mean. So for like, carnitas, if you're of Latino persuasion, Latinx persuasion, uh, know that the that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the carnitas. But for, you know, if you want an insight into Hollywood and that kind of stuff, yeah. entertainment business advertising know, stuff you're aspiring to get to yeah. one day one day many years from now uh it's a four minute segment so they send you they say give three questions you want to answer or whatever blah 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 once i say that then they go off they go off of that that changes I mean, they didn't ask me any of the shit that they said. <laughs> You're just, it's all, and I knew that going in. It's like, we'll, we can fill out whatever form they want to send us, but. We're just winging it. Yeah, it's just going to be off the cuff the whole time. So. Uh, hey, please tell us the uh, address. I remember they were like, they were like, make sure and get to the location of the place. I'm not well, telling you that, to do that. No, I saying. said the wrong address. I know too. you did, and you said the wrong one. It was great. <laughs> but they, uh, but they put it on the screen. So yeah, they put matter. the they put the right one on the screen, which was yeah. funny to me because I knew that they put the right one on there. Uh, but well, you, were, fifty-seven eleven was the address for the last for the old place. restaurant. Exactly. Yeah, that's I was I was going to ask you that if that was the case. But because uh, I couldn't remember the old restaurant's address, but uh, there was that, and then okay, so th there's the part where they showed the food really well, and the food all looked phenomenal. As look, you don't cook bad food. I know, I know you. You're a perfectionist. You're when you go to cook some food, whether it's going to be on TV or just for somebody to eat, it's going to be the best food. You know what I mean? It's going to be fire. And it really did. They captured that. Like, it actually looked really fucking good. Our brother was like, our baby brother was like, man, did you see those green beans, man? Those green beans had me like, I need to go over there. <laughs> like, that, and that's just a side Let's dish. Just go to the <laughs> store and learn how to make green beans. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I was just saying everything looked fantastic, but... The guy is like making himself a plate. Like the dude who is the the male co-host yeah. is is like, okay, I got my sandwich. <laughs> Which sauce? I'm gonna get some of this spicy sauce. <laughs> like he was getting into it, right? Well, but that's the, part of uh, how we got on was because uh, his parents come in quite a bit. Oh yeah, especially his dad. Yeah, so he was familiar with this and. It's one of their things. It's like all these morning shows, you know, they have certain things. They, not something they might do every day, but, you know, periodically. So it's when it's like a national food day, they do this. So he was like, pulled pork. Oh, dad loves this place. Because we've catered for him. And his dad comes in for lunch and shit all the time. So Oh, right on. So he had been, he hadn't been there a lot, but. But he was yeah, ready to get knew. some, get himself a big pulled he pork sandwich. He had it before, and he knew his dad loves it. So, well, but then the the lady, you were kind of making them plates, you know, uh, serving them the food. Well, you know? that's what I mean. Like, you try and talk while you're for a while, and then it's like they get to where it's like, well, we got a minute left, so give us something to eat. Yeah. Yeah, so you got yeah. to, well, they're, they're, he's like ready to go. He's ready to take a big bite of his sandwich and everything. And she was like, you put, you had put some meat on her bun, or maybe she had. Uh, <laughs> and it was just like, you know, enough that if you spread it out, it would cover the bun. <laughs> 
But and she ch- goes to like try and spread it. She like pulls, like you said, part of it was like on her hand, and she got it off of her Just hand. Just a little string, yeah. She gets it off of her hand, but then she's trying to like spread the meat, and then you are like, nope. <laughs> and when you take this nutty professor, <laughs> the, the clumps fucking serving and put it right. That's not how we do it in barbecue. You know, we don't she, spread the that's meat. What I mean, but she ate the. She ate those. It was cool. Like, because the last time I went on, like, the one chick said she had just done a cleanse, so she didn't eat anything. Oh and then goodness. the other chick's, like, a, uh, you know, like a thin waif of a chick. She had some other green beans and, you know, a bite of maybe a tiny bite of something, but like a rib or something. But like I said, the crew takes care of the rest. Yeah. It ain't no... You were like, oh no, we're but not making no, a little these, half a half sandwich. Like, these people were definitely went in. Like the other people were super nice and they uh, were cool, but these they were people cool, but these people the had food. more fun. Oh, for but sure. But that's what I mean. It's like morning shows are usually that way. Like they all are. Uh, I don't know. They kind of button it up a little more for the afternoon, but. Mm. They're, I mean, they still are super nice and fu- have fun, but and are energetic. But what, it's kind of like a whack. They try and get wacky in the morning, you know. But you wouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not d- something you, that I'm really all that familiar haven't with. Haven't ever done it. But, but uh, maybe one of these days you'll be a feature, and somebody will do morning press. And they'll have me you, sitting next let to you them. Sit next to them or something, and not say anything. Well, no, they'll probably will let you say shit because they don't really even want to do it, but At they all. have to. Yeah, you know, it's like a contractually it. obligated thing. Because anybody like, that lets you feature for them probably <laughs> they probably need a little boost, you know, <laughs> for their ticket sales. You know, oh you man, know what I'm saying. So <laughs> stop doing that. So that actually does transition pretty well to the fact that we did go on a week's hiatus again. You know, we had the one for the move, but then, like, I was trying to wrap up Brozan this last week. Yeah, weekend. yeah, you were finishing your directorial executive producer debut. Well, it was also and you know, starring. I'm, I'm also starring, and I wrote the thing. So you probably should. You know, I have. I, sh- I probably, probably should've, should've have hired me to play your part and just stayed behind the camera, or just cause... got like one person to do any of those four jobs besides me. Like, if I or just scrapped the whole project and just filmed me pulling a pork butt for <laughs> fifteen minutes. <laughs> and you, that, I could do separate viral. butts, or just <laughs> put it on a loop the first one, like fifteen times. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that people want to watch. Uh, more, probably more than your show. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. <laughs> probably more than my show. <laughs> but the problem is, so we were supposed to get it finished, but Sam Marill had to come to town and hire away my production team, uh, uh, the great Nakarim, uh, from... Being able to help uh, me produce the show, so and so that he could get some clips uh, for his YouTube what channel. Did, uh, but you know, Big Spender comes to town. So what did Sam Rowe have his girl, his girlfriend, spend some of her Netflix money on uh, <laughs> filming this <laughs> shit at Helium? Yeah, uh, at Circle Center Mall. <laughs> hey, babe. Well, <laughs> I know you got a Netflix special. I'm trying to film my own right now. Put it on YouTube for free. Can, you know. It's tough. Can can you uh, hook me up with? No, uh, Sam's great, and I and I was totally I'm just about. Kidding. I love I his. Totally, com- I love his comedy. Yeah. I'm just kidding, but I'm. That's what I'm saying. It's but we funny weren't that, able. That's. It's, it's because, funny that Taylor Tomlinson has a Netflix special and he doesn't. Because my cinematographer was literally and working, she's great too. Working himself to death. Helping me produce this and filming uh, clips for Sam uh, over the course of five nights, like, Dude, yeah, like he's gonna make so much money off of that shit. Uh, people, you aren't gonna see a lot of Netflix 
specials like you used to. People are gonna people are going this. YouTube. Dude, look at fucking Nor Mark Norman. Yeah. Yeah. Can't get a fucking Netflix special. Well, or I mean, HBO. That all the money goes to Dave Chappelle. Remember, yeah. he said it himself. He's the goat, and he deserves. Not only yeah, more or, money or for goes Chappelle to show. Eddie Murphy <laughs> for no stand up and fucking Dolomite. Oh yeah, Dolomite. Dolomite was a good movie. It though. was okay. I mean, I mean I'm not going to hate on Dolomite, but No, but I'm saying the reason the they budgets. paid him was they wanted him to do number 3. Dude. Yeah. He it's, just doesn't have any material anymore because he can't say faggot every other word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's like come to terms with his own homosexuality, and he's like, I'm not sharing that Eddie shit. Eddie Murphy ain't gay, motherfucker. He was arrested for procuring a transgender prostitute. Yeah, you done that shit. Uh, yeah. So? Are you gay? No, but that's a little queer, don't well, you think? It might have been an accident. He was probably yeah. fucked up and didn't know what he was doing. That's, that's a good point, you know? Were and, you blacked out? Yeah, I was blacked out, getting taken advantage of. Oh, okay. And then after that, I l let it happen again because I was doing their show. <laughs> yeah. And Eddie the, Murphy didn't get caught and, twice. And the show, and the show paid fifty bucks. So I was thinking to myself, like fifty bucks plus a blowjob, that's like seventy bucks. And who can really pass up a raise, you know? Uh, and then the third time uh, it was so I could have had it done by a pretty one. Because once you're already at two, it's like, who cares? So it's like two uglies. I want at least, I want, want to at least get a pretty one before I, before I throw it in, before I throw in the towel on that portion of my life. You know, the one where I'm being blown by men in wigs. And <laughs> like let me make it clear. On that part of life. If Eddie Murphy was gay, I would still love him. Me too. But I would never watch any of his movies ever again. <laughs> That's just something you couldn't get past. <laughs> oh, it's like it's like people can get past except that. for Beverly but, Hills Cop. Like the like people can get past and Woody Beverly Allen. Hills Cop too. <laughs> Woody Allen like married his daughter, and people are like, "Yeah, Beverly but, Hills Cop Midnight, three, Midnight in uh, Paris." Oh, what You're, are you just naming movies of Trading Places? <laughs> trading I probably still would watch that. <laughs> Just naming Eddie Murphy films that you would still watch if he was gay. Right, I wouldn't watch any of that clump shit or the, the fucking <laughs> one with Steve Martin. But Bowfinger, the eighties classics, I still would probably would even watch. But you, but you, but now while he's straight, you would still love the Nutty Professor. The first one, yeah, when the original he fucks up Dave Chappelle, yeah. That's one of the funniest movies ever made. And Agreed. The second one is even kind of decent. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. But I can't fuck with after that. And I can't really. F Norbit. I can't fuck with Norbit. I can't fuck Norbit, with Norbit, dude. But no, none of that shit. Norbit was offensive to me. And I was a child. I was like, I'm offended by how bad this movie is. <laughs> yeah, I can't fuck with Norbit. I can't fuck with Bowfinger. Everybody knows how we already feel about uh, coming to America, too. <laughs> we did like 40 minutes on it one day. I don't, yeah, I would never watch that again, no matter what. I would. The only way I would watch that ever again is if I wanted to kill myself and I really needed to push myself over the edge. God damn. Uh, well, if you want a, a light at the end of the tunnel, we're going to be rapping on Brozan tomorrow uh as of as of the day this was filmed uh by the time this is out roseanne will be in the can brozan will be in the can about time to polish that turd <laughs> motherfucker we're gonna we're, this is really gonna be great all original music uh written by me uh scored by me and uh performed and recorded by janky i Steve. want to uh no i want something in this so I either need to do like a opening thing or a closing thing. Just, just come to the shoot tomorrow and be the yeah. Let's do that. Why don't you come to the shoot tomorrow? You got no, the day I'm off. Trying don't to you? leave the house. Well, if you're not gonna do anything, we can record what do you here. Need, what do you need a credit for? 
No, if I just want to do, do nothing for the show. I want to do like something funny, like for the end credits. Okay. Like you know how they'll run the end credits and then they do like either bloopers or oh yeah set that, up the sequel or that something. That would be that like would be the cool. Marvel movies always do it. Then I'll be like, like you gotta come up with where. I think I've already got it. I think I've already come up with something it right where I now. can set up a sequel or something where I can open it up like a little, you know, thirty second monologue where I say, "You want to sing?" Like you know how in like the old Disney movies, like Bambi and the Fox and the Hound and the shit, and they'd have that old timey voice guy say the shit in the beginning. Well, there used to be a old dog that lived <laughs> you're not with the, the hunter. I'm sorry, buddy. You're not the narrator. I already cast the no, narrator. No, I know. Not that. Not the narrator, but just some, I get what you're something saying. like that, but just, you know what I mean. We'll yeah, we'll, co- we'll come up with something for you. We'll figure it out. I mean, we got to shop it around to, you know, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon. I'm not shopping this. I'm just putting it out on YouTube so everybody can just watch it. It's what something I did. Idiot. It's something I did. It's done. It's over. If people Jeez. watch it and they like it, we'll make more of it. You've seen the hell how not? many views we get on our podcast. We haven't monetized this yet. Yeah. Mark Norman can put his shit on YouTube because he's going to get millions of views. I think this is going to get thousands of views. I think that this is really going to be the thing that gets me that 10,000 people that really love my stuff and want to... Want to awesome watch my idea. shit that I make? Awesome idea. Just when you're at the bars in Newcastle, just snag people's phones and hit YouTube, watch it, put it back in their pocket. Do you think I'm not already doing stuff like that for this show? Excellent. What are you talking? Every time I go over to somebody's house, I'm like, you got YouTube on Life your TV? Life hack. You got YouTube on your TV? Just look for really Subscribe. fucked up people. Like, <laughs> oh, that, that dude looks like he might uh, be overdosing from fentanyl. Well, but, uh, but speaking I'm going to grab his phone views, and watch my shit on YouTube real quick. Speaking of the views on YouTube, by the way, if you're looking for this show and you've ever had trouble where they uh, say, where it says... Um, yeah, they shadow, shadow ban us. When it rains, it pours by Luke Combs. Yeah, the problem no, is we that aren't you, a country song by some weird fat queer boy. Fucking neck beard having Neanderthal. We're we're a comedy podcast with two yeah. reasonably intelligent individuals who, if they were to make music, it and the music I've made certainly is better than Luke Combs. So yeah. like they tre- out- they shadow ban us and treat us like we're somebody that would transition into a. Uh, uh, Spiritual being, prophet of a, prophet a, of of a, a major, major religion. religion, and uh, you know, would say phrases like queer boy and faggot, and you know <laughs> what I'm saying? We don't do that, shit. yeah. We've we're never, nice guys, we're we nice just want to make Indiana. jokes and have fun. Look, this is a ping pong eighth grade ping pong champion trophy. Yeah, this is a family show. I did show. that, and I've been on TV twice. This how is many, f- how many ping pong championships have you won? Add to the list. <laughs> this is zero. Fuck, we only got one. I got a fourth grade discus. Uh, how many times have you been or on fourth TV? Place, TV? Fourth place, fourth uh, place ribbon for discus throwing in high school. Got how, fourth place. How many times you been on TV? Zero. Fourth place doesn't get shit. You don't even get a ribbon for that. Yeah, you do. You get a white ribbon. Oh, white, you. Cut that. Edit that out. (laughs) Dude, you can't say white. We don't want to be more white. Well, I got a white ribbon. That was like that was like one of my accomplishments. He said it again. Dude, do you want to be unshadow banned or not? We don't get get white ribbons. We don't get blue ribbons either. Fucking blue is the cops. Yeah. I think we are the blue is either the cops or the crips. Either (laughs) if we were the crips. We probably would get a Crayola crayon named after us. But we, <laughs> we don't want to be blue. We don't want to be white. We want to be bay. And we don't even want to. I'm. We want to be one hundred percent half black. Available on YouTube. Uh, it's my buddy Kyle Ice Henson's silver metallic. My buddy Kyle Henson's got a new stand-up special, and it's called One Hundred Percent Half Black. 
Uh, check it out on and YouTube. We represent it's, for him. So yeah, yeah. Get we, our back. We come out and and watch more of our stuff. Get some of our videos up to the same amount of views as some of the other ones. It's like, but no, Brozan's gonna fucking pop, man. The, all, every first off, it's filmed in Newcastle. Everybody in Newcastle that has internet on their phone is gonna watch this show for at least ten minutes worth of the show. It's probably gonna be twelve well, why minutes aren't long. They're watching this. Well, because this we do an hour a week, and a lot of these people are fucking snorting pills. They've got shit to do. They're asleep at their parents' house. They're fucking yeah, getting so they a chicken sandwich from a bar out with their face on the floor. That's and let I, it play. I mean, I wish that they would, but you just know. turn it on before you fucking uh, pass out with your face in the toilet. <laughs> yeah, because so you snorted too many oxycontins. <laughs> check out uh, Kyle Henson's thing. I love you, Kyle. I wanted to let everybody out there know about that. Yeah, big ups to Kyle, dude. And uh, blah, if, you, blah. if you want to find our podcast, just type When It Rays, then hit enter in the search bar on YouTube, and it'll actually bring you to our shit. If we'd have known that, we'd have been telling people to do that for fucking the last year instead of trying to tell them, oh, no, make sure and go ahead and click it again. <laughs> I didn't really tell anybody anything. Oh. Okay, well, I've been trying to get the word out about the show, you know. But, uh, uh, well, I mean, it's the it pours, and it's like when it pours, it pours, dude. Because it's just because it, it because it pours, uh, we pour. You know what I'm saying? Like that's it's all been that those two words that have been holding us back. It the because when it rays, maybe doesn't we even make any it. fucking sense without it pours. It's not even a saying. If you just go when it rays, it's like. But that's a good abbreviation for Maybe this show. Maybe we were too creative. Uh, they just don't Maybe want us. Maybe we should have picked up, picked a better name. They don't want us to succeed, John. You what know? could be a better name? Well, because we're like my ribbon from <laughs> high school track. <laughs> TV star plus brother. TV <laughs> star and his brother. Fat brother. Uh, Big the, fat brother. The <laughs> Muslim god and his little brother. <laughs> Alu Akbar. Alu Ak, no, what is it? Alu Akbar, she's my baby. <laughs> like, uh, like, isn't that the Dion, like the Wanderer or whatever? Anyway, I don't know about that. So you we were talking about me being in the bars over there and in Newcastle. It's just because, like, I don't have power, you know. So I go to the bar to charge my phone <laughs> so I can watch a little King of the Hill before I go to sleep at night. And uh, you're off the office, yeah. Pretty, pretty much been off the office, been more on the king lately. And uh, Bobby, I just try and I just try and have like 20 minutes of a show that'll make me maybe chuckle, like put me to sleep in a good mood, you know. But I've been having horrible nightmares, regardless of how I go to sleep. Um, yeah, I just eat gummies. I had one dream where I went to hell. And Samuel L. Jackson was like my guide through hell. And uh, he was like, you want a steak? <laughs> and he just has this whole side of beef, like completely cooked. And he just like cuts off a tomahawk. That's pretty dope. And uh, well, I'm sitting down, I'm like, eat Dude, this steak. I have weird ass fucking dreams. He's, he's telling I... me that I'm going, that this is hell. And that I'm going to, you're gonna, what I'm going to live in is a trailer park full of assless tweakers. They're tweakers with like these weird <sighs> concave hunchbacks where they have no butt. Like their butt doesn't ex Like they have spina bifida, you know, like they have no butt. And uh, these little tweakers, they crawl around on the ground and they're constantly trying to suck my dick, but they all have like razor teeth, like jagged, like a, like a piranha's teeth. And they like bite my cock off and I die. And again, and I come back and they get swarmed by them again. And it's like this repetitive... Uh, terror rising that just goes on for eternity. But I'm eating the steak the whole time, and then next thing you know, swarm the no ass tweakers. And uh, then I woke up in a cold sweat. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably good. just meant you had to piss or shit. Oh, dude, had the worst diarrhea ever that night. There you go. You knew, dude. Uh, no, but uh, to be honest, I. Pretty much tuned most of that out, but most of what I heard sounded pretty awesome. Like I like having crazy fucking. Dreams. I do not like that. That's that was why, horrible. like, dude, you know, I'm my. 
I eat edibles before I go to bed every night. Yes, and I shit do. gives you fucking wild dreams. Like you wake up and laying on your on your stomach, and you'll wake up jumping up. Oh shit! Like you fucking been through some shit, but that you have fucking cool ass like weird dreams. It's awesome. Well, I was thinking about what that fucking dream probably was a manifestation of, and it's like I like never had anything like that. If uh, were you, you said going to hell? Samuel Jackson was eating your dick. <laughs> no, he was not eating my dick. I said, did you he watch the hateful hate eight where he made that one dude eat his dick? Well, he just seems like the kind of guy who'd introduce you to a bad place. Like, you know, like, this is how it's going to be. You know, he's, he's he the narrator on, in a lot of the movies I like. Did he have a Kangol hat like, on? Know? He did have the Kangol hat on. Jackie backwards. Brown? Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown, Sam? <laughs> that's who, that's, that's who that's, Now we're hell. talking business here. Dude, fucking black... Uh, all black. Uh, was like Bridget the Fonda there? Sweatsuit, that suede kind of sweatsuit. No. Uh, the uh, rest were monsters that were trying to bite my dick off uh, with their razor teeth. Uh, but Jackie Brown, Samuel L. Jackson. But it was like, was it was the manifestation of the hell? fact that like I was like waiting, like every night I was spending Weird. in the bar waiting for my phone to say 100% charge. You know, having a few drinks and like some of the characters around that there in the bars are a little, little suspect, a little sus. You know what I mean? Don't say that. And uh, I hate it when people say that. You hate when people say sus, dude. It's just it's just brevity, bro. Well, you're, if you're not into the whole brevity thing, you can call me dude instead of dude Reno. Uh, but you can call me. Tired of people saying sus. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, they're just some suspect characters, let's just say. And uh, maybe yeah. I was just... <laughs> yeah, coming from the guy that lives in the woods in a camper and it's, has to charge his phone at a bar. I, apparently, I was starting to feel a little swarmed. You know what I mean? You know, the, the uh, top notch of the community... Well, then there was the like guy. then there was the night that I probably almost got my ass kicked by this like veteran guy who was being just a huge dick. He was just screaming over and over again. I fought for your freedom. I fought for your freedom. And he said it like five times, and finally I just go, "Yeah, but how many DUIs do you have?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah those like are say you, something that'll impress me. Son. Those are usually the most honorable. Yeah, people are the ones that say, <laughs> "I fought for you, yeah, freedom." I, yeah. yeah, yeah, real pleasant. I was just saying yeah, that, that guy wants that guy wanted to fight me, you and imagine, I was like, "Why?" Because I was tired of listening to you repeat yourself. Could you imagine anybody in our family saying that shit? No, <laughs> all the fucking Marines we got in our family. You think they would ever fucking say that? As, <laughs> no matter how drunk they were. No, I don't think so. Not if they were mad at you, they would just knock your fucking ass out. Yeah, they wouldn't that's true fucking too. yell and scream like a Karen about what they did. It was just weird. It was like they were chastising the whole bar, like telling the whole bar that they were a bunch of pussies that weren't military people or whatever yeah, it's what, like well some of us is that why you did it to some fucking, of us graduated high school after we realized the war in iraq and afghanistan were a fucking sham is that why you did it <laughs> you know? to uh come back to a town of fucking fourteen thousand people and fucking shout it in a bar <laughs> with 14 people <laughs> yeah with 14 people he, he owned, those are the only people he fought for too he didn't fight for me or you just those people <laughs> fucking moron yeah that just bothered me so you don't like, fight for freedom to brag about it in a fucking hole in the wall bar in newcastle but i started realizing like hey maybe going here every day to fucking charge your phone isn't the safest thing to do with your life like being in a bar every single day get a fucking <coughs> charger like it's a one thing to charge your tickets box. Yeah, but I, it up at I was thinking of it as like, I'd go listen to a couple songs on the jukebox, go have a few cocktails, and then 
go back to the place, you know. Yeah, and you know where relax. you're going, right? But go to the Starbucks, dude. Yeah, that's a better place. Or that weird they don't have one in cafe Newcastle where anymore. Dad used to play music at. Also closed. Uh, yeah, dude, it's the new Great Depression out there, man. Go it's to the Chrysler great. Factory. Go to the old closed down <laughs> Chrysler Factory. Find one of those outlets on the side of the outside of the building. But I bet they still got some kind of power on that bitch. It's Crown now, I believe, is the name of the company. It's a company that makes car parts out of Ohio. It's kind of like the... Uh, Brake pads? It's like the real-life uh, Tommy Boy Callahan Auto Parts. Callahan? Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're they uh, a company that seems to be paying good, too. Like, people... I mean, nobody's making Chrysler money. Is Chrysler Bo, was fucking... Is Bo Derek over there? Fist. Back in the day. No, but oddly enough, I'm in a camper down by the railroad tracks, which is, I know sounds a lot like a van down by the river, but it's different. It's uh, yeah, you it's can't way more water out to brush your teeth. Well, or eat, I min- have, eat, eat minnows out of the river. I keep a couple of uh, gallons of water there, you know, just because I don't have running water doesn't mean I don't have water. I mean, I wash up every morning in my face bowl like an Amish person. I don't know if you've ever I been around you the Amish. I thought you were gonna uh, make a shower out of that trash can. I haven't gotten around to it, you know, because I was hanging out in the bar every day charging my phone. <laughs> well, give me that back that trash can. Then. That's a good ch- trash can. But Gil's got it. I'll put that in my garage. Oh damn! I think Gil's already got it. Oh, Gil can have it. He's my brother too. If yeah. I give it to you, your fat brother, or, no. or Gil, Gil can have it. He's bro. my brother, too. He can have it. Just as much as could you. I tried to make a rhyme. I don't know Is, why. Was that another one of those Mohammedisms? It's from the Quran. Straight from the Quran. Fuck yeah. Muhammad for life. Ten yeah. by ten with the S on the end. <sighs> so, have you always uh, felt like at least a little part of you was the holy prophet of uh the islamic religion no or is this a new thing it just kind of dawned on you one day no i'm back to malcolm little now fuck that (laughs) muhammad shit (laughs) yeah you're going you're going back to gangster malcolm yeah i'd rather just play russian roulette with you right now (laughs) i'll shoot your nose off bitch (laughs) Don't go into that fucking scene again. Why do you always want to talk? I love it. It's good. (laughs) God damn it. Yeah, Debbie Mazar. Fucking Spike Lee. Those chicks were fine. Those chicks in in that era of Malcolm's life. That chick, Debbie Mazar, dude. She's in all the fucking good movies, man. Malcolm X is one of the few films where you see people on cocaine and they act like people really do act on cocaine. Like. In Boogie Nights, they do a pretty good job of showing people completely spun the fuck out. Oh, yeah. People that have limitless cocaine. Yeah. And and nothing to live for. Yeah. Yeah, they get a little bit different. (laughs) But, like, to just show a couple people kind of hanging around doing it, that scene with the guy who never forgets. Yeah, when you can only afford enough to not die. (laughs) Yeah, when you're fucking Juliet Moore and... Or Julianne Moore and fucking... Or Mark Wahlberg and fucking Boogie Nights. They got a ton of money from fucking on film. Too they much fuck cool. on film for life and had terrible childhood. So they just do it till they kill themselves. <laughs> or the fucking dude. You want to play baseball? I love. That's my favorite scene. That's my favorite guy. Oh, that's Cosmo. He's Chinese. Yeah, that's yeah. the guy. You guys want to play baseball? Is that the director? That plays that guy? I It might be, I think. I don't know, but it's fucking so, that scene is so good. Yeah. And his bodyguard, do you know who his bodyguard is? The actor that played him? No. Fucking. Is it the dude from the. What, it's the dude from Rock, Coming to America. Rocksteady and Bebop? No. He, it's the dude from Coming to America. That fucking sings. No, the it's queen to not. Be. It's not the queen yes. to be. Is yes. it really? No, no it's no, not. No, 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 it's not. That's from True Romance. I'm saying that's from True Romance. Yeah, 
Gary Oldman's bodyguard is is the queen, queen to, be to be. But it's still a fucking crazy cokehead dude that guy. bodyguard. Yeah. I mean, I was I was close. But dude, in that still crazy that Oha is fucking Gary Oldman's bodyguard in fucking True Romance. It is. Shout out to Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. And we like just, feet too, bitch. Just Gary Oldman in we, general. Fucking Wu Tang. Let's do karate and shit. I like, love Quentin Tarantino. Hell yeah, man. I, I was, and feet. My whole and feet. My whole my you know whole what thing. I'm saying? My my whole thing with the the Boogie Nights thing was like that was like people really spun out on blow. But like the yeah, way dude, that Spike, Hoffman, the way Spike Lee had him uh, in the early days of Malcolm X doing blow, like just kind of t- playing around with it, not really becoming no, heavy duty coke. Yeah, whatever. it was like it was very uh, that they acted that very well. It, it didn't seem like you've seen bad interpretations well, dude, of they people being fucked up in movies. Actually, buy enough to get spun out. <laughs> That's the point. I'm saying, telling you. Oh. You don't think those gangsters could have gotten spun out on that shit? Dude, they're fucking stealing silverware and shit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Fucking, yeah. They didn't have loot to fucking Dude. have a fucking pile in front of them like Tony Montana. <laughs> no. Dude, it was fucking Malcolm Little, me, and Spike Lee just chilling with but, Debbie Mazar and that other white bitch. Like I was saying, though, I'm You've cool seen like cool. your, uh, what is that? Uh, Eyes wide shut, where Nicole Kibben takes like two hits off of a joint, and then is just weird as fuck. Like, have you ever smoked pot before? You don't. People don't act like that. Try adds a little PCP in it. I, I don't know. All, all I'm saying is it was just weird and didn't catch any kind of vibe. That well. Keith, like people it's, a movie that, it's a movie that they... I'm sorry to teach you more about show business, but it's a movie they don't really have time to show a circle of people smoking a joint for fucking 15 minutes of the movie. <laughs> I'm just saying... You get the point. She smoked fucking drugs, and she now she's fucked up. They can't show the actual shit of... It was just weird how... Who takes two hits off of a joint and then they're just like, <laughs> our life is a weird crawling nightmare. It's it's the candle wax of pain dripping just down my neck. It to and you, you're like, dude. I don't know. I it just it it seemed it's fucking like why phony. was on the '70s show they didn't sh- show them smoking anything. They just sm- showed them with the sm- big smoke cloud in there. Yeah. And fucking Scooby Doo, they didn't show them smoking. They just showed them get out of the bus, and the smoke came out of the bus. When you're you're on, I mean, you gotta get in these commercials, dude. Like you can't spend that much time on showing how long it actually takes to get high off a of weed. You can just show, just she takes those couple hits, and that's it. Then get to the fact that she's really strange. She just didn't seem like somebody who's baked on pot. She seemed like somebody who was like out of her fucking mind. I don't know. Just I don't even realistic. know what fucking movie you never saw about. Eyes Wide Shut, bro. About the Illuminati sex cults that be fucking in mansions <laughs> and shit. Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman. Pull your head out of your ass, John. What the fuck? <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about? With the frogs and shit. I don't know about the frogs. They got like a fucking uh, one of the. You got to wear a mask like your uh, no, fucking plague doctor, shit. and they're all banging in the big marble mansions. Anyway, no, that's a uh, <coughs> it's a Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, I think so. <coughs> Never saw it, man. Oh, okay. But I'm still explaining to you how Hollywood works. Like <laughs> when they show somebody drunk, they don't show them taking their first shot at 11 in the morning like everybody else normally would and then leading up till 6 30 or so when they actually start getting buzzed they just show them when they're fucked up yeah i get what you're saying you gotta save time dude i just thought maybe her performance was lacking 
uh, a little something, but it's okay. Well, you, you can, should know because like, you've been on TV a lot. You know, I'm I'm just trying to. You're known as an actor <laughs> and TV personality. So well, you know, you, you should, watch a lot. You of... should give Nicole Kidman notes. <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll grant you that credit. Uh, Nicole Kidman could learn a lot from you because she hasn't done shit. That's that's not true, John. You know she's done a lot of things with her tremendous career, and I was not trying to belittle Nicole Kidman because she had one bad. She was in that one good one movie scene. with uh, Dustin Hoffman when he played the. Dutch, I don't know how Dutch Schultz. I don't know how I'm gonna come off as an actor in this fucking show that I'm making at all. I I really never acted like this before. I played a couple of roles that were based on me, and this role was kind of based on me. So I would think that it would be okay, but well, I really don't won't know until I see it. That's the whole thing. I would hope you could act like yourself. Yeah, that's if not, then it's pretty hard to might fail. As, like, might as well give up. Yeah, it's pretty hard to fail uh, at playing yourself. But comedians have done it before. Comedians have done it before. Uh, you know, they get a show with their name on it, and then it's like, oh damn. Canceled after four episodes, two episodes, five episodes. <laughs> I'm canceling myself after one. <laughs> one and done. You know what I'm saying? This is a limited run right here. So, Might be the next Chuck Lorre. Who knows? I don't know. Chuck Lorre. I'm not rich big, as fuck. Yeah, he's rich as fuck, but his body of work is like. Roseanne? Yeah, that's probably that's where the, he started, dude. Yeah, <laughs> he, he he was like uh, he started with the best. <laughs> I heard he licked all Brett downhill Butler's from there. Asshole too. What'd you say? Said I heard he licked Brett Butler's asshole. Oh, that's completely that's... fabricated. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I just thought it sounded funny. <laughs> I was gonna say like Brett Butler. Now that's a that's yeah. A she's on hot uh, lady right there. Uh, <laughs> Ask him for shit on fucking, uh, what do you call it? GoFundMe. Oh, really? Bro, she was making fucking like 100000 an episode. This is a long time ago, though. A lot of trips to Cancun <laughs> since then, you know what I mean? A lot of fucking trips to the pill shop. Oh, really? And she looked all busted <laughs> up? No, she's admittedly been a fucking pill head. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, news to me? I didn't, I don't keep up on <laughs> Brett Butler's drug use. You know? It's funny because after Charlie Sheen left Two and a Half Men, he had his little show with fucking Brian Austin Green and whatever. He, and she had a part on there because she hated Chuck Lorre too. <laughs> so Charlie <laughs> Sheen gave her a job. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I uh, I love Charlie Sheen. You know, I I mean, sure. Has he said some racist things? Absolutely. Has he Dude, said he's some in mean, major league? Has he said some terrible things about he's women? He's in platoon. Absolutely. But yeah, Dude, major Kevin league. Dillon smashed Dude. a Vietnamese person's face in with a shotgun. Yeah, and then he was nobody on show. gives nobody he's talks just, shit about him. He was he was on a show about a bunch of forty year olds trying to get hot young puss. <laughs> you know, it's like. We yeah, all get our did, justice in the what end. What did Charlie Sheen ever do? Just <coughs> I don't want mm. Charlie Sheen. I got a side. Some with, up I got a side with Chuck Lorre on this. He went based all, off of his. He went Judaism. all Mel Gibson. You know, he said that. How yeah, I is. got a. I got a side with talking, Chuck Lorre on he this. Ta- started talking about what used to be your favorite country club of uh, religious ethnicities. <laughs> the, Jewish people. <laughs> That's why I said I've got to yeah. side with Chuck Lorre on this. Yeah, he fucked up. He came, yeah, against, I came won't, against God's chosen I won't people. ever watch Major League or Major League 2 again. You know what's better film anyway? I will probably. A League of Their Own. Now, will, that's a movie about baseball. Oh, yeah, but. And Charlie I heard that Shane's they take a shower. I probably will still watch uh, Platoon, though. <laughs> I'll give him one. Yeah, Platoon's good. Willem and Defoe. Ferris Bueller, but because he's only in it just for like thirty seconds. I never thought Ferris but Bueller fuck Charlie was any... Sheen. Yeah, I know, right? Like mm. you get, get rich for get, rich for so get long. dead from AIDS soon, Charlie Sheen. I think he has you anti semite. 
Yeah. Anti-Semitic yeah, that's why I told him shit. to die from it soon. Well, that's why he was talking he about it. trying to take blood from animals because like his blood is slowly killing him. Oh, tiger blood keeps you alive from AIDS. I think that's why he would want it. Is that what? Why would you Magi- be trying how to? How Magic Johnson's? Why would you be worried about blood transfusions if you didn't have a blood disease? That, I just, just did the Will Smith look at the camera. Yeah, yeah I saw that. So you were proud of that one, huh? You were proud of that one. I saw that. Oh, man. What time What time we got on there? Oh, shit. We, well, we could wrap it here. You got anything else you want to talk well, about six. there, Mo? Well, uh, not really. No, I think we covered it. That was pretty funny. I enjoyed that. You just <laughs> fucked up with the fucking camera again. Spill shit. But other than you want to just leave that in? Do I, I don't care. Like, let's just leave it in. What the fuck? Like, this is just it's who's just the master? It it's just how it goes. Yeah, man. Who's you, the master? Well, I'm not gonna answer that question. <laughs> who's the master, Bruce <laughs> Keith Ray? <laughs> Look. Uh, <laughs> fuck you, bro. Show enough, you know what I'm saying? <laughs>